somebody coming from, you know, Nordic climate, sort of um, Russia, Moscow, and then moving here, it, it really hits you in the face. So it took a while to process it and start making sense of it. Back in Moscow, a little over a decade ago, I was studying architecture and interior design. So for, for that program, it was quite classical training. I had to build physical models of different spaces and environments. So they were all built out of paper, meticulous constructions. And then I realized uh, way into that program, maybe third, maybe fourth year, that I prefer my photographs to the spaces. I was really interested in the flattening of space that was happening and a sort of illusion that photography created, an illusion of scale. And um, you could play with a lot of things, you know, how photography sort of translated space. And actually there was another thing that I rarely mention, but I think it's as important as my formal training in graduate school, uh, was my two-year gig as a shop window decorator. So I worked with, you know, you work with limited parameters of shop windows, and this was a sort of high-end um, luxury furniture brand that I worked for to pay for my college. And then you would arrange those objects in a myriad of combinations using lights and props for every other week. I had to change it up and sort of surprise the viewer outside. And this was in a way an exhibition space for me, so I was dealing with multiple windows that I had to change up, and I learned a lot about composition and space. Miami seemed to me like a live-scale collage, and the whole project Flood Zone started with exploring Miami, sort of uh, processing the place through the lens. It's a place full of contrasts, it's fascinating. There's no one singular reading of it. You know, it is, it's quite complex. There are certain stigmas about Florida, you know, there are certain stereotypes about Florida, and I think in part my goal is to dismantle those stereotypes. Um, yeah, to overturn those. I don't want this work to be placed in solely environmental context. I think there are more layers to it than that. You know, it is, it certainly doesn't work as a reportage. It's more of an observational sort of psychological portrait of a place that's undergoing a very rapid change that we, our generation, will observe. How do you live in the place? How do you make home in a place that it's about to go underwater. You know, it's essentially sinking. There's no solid ground, and yet it continues to get developed. Uh, it continues to expand Florida's third state, I think, for inwards movement, migration. So it's growing, it's expanding, despite all odds. The population is not moving away. Blood in the title, I thought, also fit the idea of a mythological flood, you know, a society that's ready for massive change, for some sort of cleanse that's radical and the hope for a solution, right, where there's no clear solution in sight right now for a number of issues that those areas are facing. It's painfully beautiful, the place, but at the same time, maybe it was never meant for human survival. 